Aloha and welcome. Uh, we're gonna start this lesson uh, doing something I usually don't do. I'm going to actually help you do one of the labs. And normally I like for you to do this on your own, but I thought, you know, it's not something I do that often. So let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at it, tackle it together. I haven't really looked at this yet, so uh, it'll be an adventure. And I, I kind of want you to see how I look at a problem and how I kind of struggle through it. And uh, because up until now, you've been seeing me with uh, examples that I've set up and it looks like, hey, he gets it right the first time. That's not the case. I struggle through things. I make a lot of mistakes and I want you to see somebody making a lot of mistakes as we go through it. So let's go ahead. I'll share my screen and hold on while I pull that up. I believe this is the one right here. And uh, did I share the right screen? Yes, I did. OK, so uh, we're going to go ahead and look at this. Uh, so this lab is contact list. It says a contact list is a place where you can store a specific contact with other associated information, such as a phone number, email address, birthday, et cetera write a program that first takes in word pairs that consist of a name and a phone number, both strings, separated by a comma. That list is followed by a name and your program should output the phone number associated with that name. Assume the search name is always in the list. Okay, so that tells us something. We're gonna, uh, when it says assume the search name is always in the list, that means we're not gonna have to check for errors. So we, we're not gonna have to do anything where if uh, that person isn't actually in there. So it says, example, the input is going to look like this. We've got a name, comma, then the uh, the phone number. Then we have a space here, name, comma, phone number, Frank, comma, blah, you know, phone number. Then on the second line, we're saying, give us Frank. And Frank is going to be this number right here. And that's what it gives us here. So given that, um, we're going to have to read in this line. So when we read in this line, uh, that's gonna be an input basically, right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna say, uh, let's say line because why not? Line is equal to input and we're just gonna input the string and then we're going to uh, take that and let's uh, just uh, print it first, just to make sure everything is right. We're gonna print that line and we always start simple. I like to start simple. So we're just gonna go ahead and run the program. And what do we get? Uh, yeah, it says uh, your oh, program expects input. Oh yeah, let's put our input here. We're gonna say Bob 8675309. So when we run it, it should just spit it right back out. That's what we wanted. All we're doing is we're doing the basic you know, first thing, just make sure we're getting the input correct. So we know we're getting the input correct. Uh, so now, now what do we do? Well, we do two, I see two different things here. I see, first of all, we need to split line. Uh, in order to split it, the first thing we need to do is split it by these white spaces. So we're gonna have to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and say that um, when we split it, we're gonna get an unknown number of things there. So we're gonna say, um, let's call it pairs. So pairs is gonna be equal to um, line, which is what we just got, dot split. And we're gonna put in the split character is gonna be a space. And that should give us different pairs. And we'll test that by saying for pair in pairs, and we're gonna print that real quick. We're gonna say print pair. And what you should see there is that pair of like Joe, blah, 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 and all this. So let's go ahead and copy that and use that to print it out. So down, or uh, to test it. So down here, we're gonna put, hello. Uh, I thought I copied that, let me see. So copy and paste. It's not allowing me to paste. Uh, I'll just leave it as is for now then. Or right, wait, no, let's put something else in there. We'll put in uh, Lisa um, 222222. Two, 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 two. Then we hit run program. 
and it puts out Bob and 8675309 and then Lisa and 2220. Oh, I see what the problem is here. I have put a space there. I don't think we should have had the space there. I think that the space only goes in one place. And let me go up there and recheck the input and make sure that that is the case. Do they have a space in between? Nope, that's right. So Joe in this should not have a space in there uh, after the comma. So it was my input that was wrong here. So I should only have the space right there. So if I run that program again, it's going to give me correctly, this is the first item and that's the second item. Good, so that's wonderful. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to split each and every one of these. So, um, so when we split it, <laughs> as we go through each set of pairs, we want to split it into two different items. So we're gonna basically have, um, a, let's call it name and number is equal to, or this is called unpacking here, a name number is equal to pair. Remember pair is gonna be a value like Bob comma this. We're gonna split it with the comma. So I'm gonna say pair dot split by the comma. And that should give me a name and a number. And just to prove that we'll do a print name, print number. And hopefully this doesn't die on me. Yay, it actually worked. So it's name, number, name, number. So good, but here's the thing. We've got to uh, take another name after this and then tell it which one it was. So as we're processing this, yay, we get name and number, but now we have to store it somewhere. So how do we do that? Well, if we think about it, we're gonna need something like a dictionary because a dictionary, we could have the name is the keyword and the number is the other one. So let's do that. Let's go up here and let's say line equals input, great. Then we're gonna have our dictionary or let's call it our phone book. So we'll call it our phone book equals squigglies, yay, squiggly brackets, uh, curly braces. So we'll go ahead and take that. And now we'll go over here, instead of throwing that name away, we're gonna go ahead and say um, phone book of name is equal to number. And that stores us for it, uh, that stores it for us. So that's great. But now we need to do another input. And we're gonna have uh, lookup name is going to be equal to input. All righty, and if that's the case, then here we need to, let's say we wanna put in Lisa as the person we're gonna look up. So we're gonna have that as the lookup. So that'll give us that. And then we just do a print of phone book using the lookup name that we just got. And that I think should do it. So we're saying, you know, look up phone book for, you know, Lisa in this case, and that should give us that. So with any luck, this will run. So I hit run and it explodes in my face. Yay. So what is it telling us here? File main.py line 10 syntax error, unexpected end of file wall parsing. So end of while uh, end of uh, file uh, EOF is end of file while parsing means that it uh, I did something that left it hanging here. So what did I do that left it hanging here? Well, what I did was I didn't end my uh, my uh, what do you call it my uh, parentheses here. So I go back up here. I add that parentheses in. So what happened was it started this statement and it said, "Hey, I don't have the end to it," and then the whole thing ended. So it said, hey, I got to the end of the file and you know, it, you know, know, it, something was wrong here. So it said un end of file, uh, unexpected end of file because it expected this character here. So now I try to run it again. And it tells me that Lisa is 222222. So that is correct. So then I say submit mode. And now we cross our fingers because we really don't wanna mess this up. So I hit submit for grading. 
And what does it tell me? Output, compare output. Uh, so I'm guessing that we're good here. Yep, 10 out of 10. Wow. So I did this with a very surprising number of errors. I only got a couple here. And that's not a usual thing. Uh, this is a simple enough problem that you don't have too many errors pop up. But notice what I did. Every time I would run it, I would put put maybe a statement or two in here and run it, then another statement and then run it. And the reason I do that is if you put too much in there and you make a little screw up before and you've got five or six lines, sometimes you know you have to kind of dig around to find out where you went wrong. But I just know that I'm not that good for doing too many lines before I hit an error. So I'll just build it up incrementally. And then I just go to make sure that some of my assumptions are working. Like, hey, I've got the name and number. Is it properly, you know, like first we printed out the line to see if it was coming out correct. Then I found out, hey, I've got a, a data error here. I actually need to go in there and uh, fix the what the data looks like going in. And that's that's nice to do. You catch that first. And then you go and you look and make sure that, you know, your name and your number was being, you know, properly split and, you know, uh, and, and, you know, taken there. So, you know, that worked out great. And then we just did a simple lookup and luckily that worked. But, you know, things, you know, when you've got a short program, I, I still would just do it line by line, do a couple lines and see if it runs, a couple lines and see if it runs. Makes it very easy to find out where your errors are. And it's just, uh, it's, it's really good practice. So um, yeah, that's uh, the end of the lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you have problems with it yourself, reach out to me, feel free, just send me a, a message and I'd be happy to answer or uh, meet up with you in Zoom. So uh, otherwise have a great day and I'll see you in the next chapter.